Good evening. How's everyone doing? How are we all doing? Uh, so today we're working more on the material editor. Uh, I've just got to remember how we run the game. So last stream, we made it so you could press a new tab. Up comes a new tab by default with the material editor right here. Um, and you can change the albedo, change the emissive, and change the emissive strength, metalness, and roughness. These are all properties that are changing in the background, but they're not being applied to this thing here, um, which is the, mo the test model. We also probably need to not do any of this sort of debug draw stuff. Um, and we need to have a way to probably have some different viewing options that we can configure to say, you know, change the, the sky, the skybox and, uh, probably, probably rotating the objects as well, just some slider or something um and then we also want to get these settings to go through into the renderer so we can actually see it on this model um but yeah um yeah i think we want to try and maybe make a different model as well because this one's a bit yeah silly we can maybe make another model as well so that's the plan for today um and then in a future stream, I think we'll be doing the undo and redo stuff uh, and probably showing the the history of every edit you've made and that gets saved out to a file. So yeah, so maybe a couple more streams and then we should be finished, but it might be a three streams. We'll see how things go. But yeah, hope, um, I hope everyone's having a good day. And if you've got any questions, feel free to ask away. Welcome people. Um, Radio. so the first thing I wanted to do was to fix that camera thing. So in the main, in the main function, we have like obviously the main loop. Um, and in the main loop, we sort of start a frame. We do some like entity stuff here. And then update the UI text for some reason. You like text input. That should probably be done. Let's get that out up here. Uh, and then we make uh, a payload for the graphics thread. We haven't really got a graphics thread yet, but we're, prepare we're at least preparing for the future. Um, so the, the main problem is, right, when we have, when the editor is up, there's like, so we've got this sort of camera here, we can move around here, but when the editor is up, um, we want to be using the camera a camera specific for the editor and yeah for the material editor like each each editor will have its own little camera stuff i think um and you don't want it to update any mouse events so yeah we're going to look into that next basically the camera or well, the editor is going to be up most of the time when you're developing stuff and it is going to be probably it probably be in release builds as well i don't know so you'd be able to go into the editor and then close it down type of thing so yeah hey driver stayed how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, thank you. Um, 
yeah, just been uh, busy working today. I got a good workout in last night. That was good. I have a bit of a, you know, I work out every, every other day. I do a good workout. But obviously it's seven day week. So on Fridays, uh, yeah, Friday's my last one of the week. And then um, the next day is three days later on that one. But I was starting to think, you know, maybe, maybe I should just say screw it and exercise as well on the Sunday and a Monday. Because by the time the Monday rolls around, my joints kind of feel a bit fit, eh? feel a bit eh. So maybe I need to work out four days a week, you know. It's my current conundrum. But yeah, how are you doing? Oh, yeah, well, I think work today is pretty chill. Got some work done. Yeah. I'm now back to working four or five day weeks because I used up all my holiday. So I was spending every Wednesday with my with my boy, which is sad now I don't get to do that. But it's cool. Right, so where's that sort of debug draw stuff coming from? It's coming from like... So I think if we update the renderer last, it could clear the debug draw. If... If it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so where's this any of this sort of like game let's have, have a search for a game draw 3D. Right, we haven't seen anything that Oh it's done on the renderer, that's why isn't it? Right, let's just get rid of it then. So we draw this sort of grid. Oh, where are you at? This is the gizmo render code. Uh, right, so it's like region. This is it. There's debug drawing all those regions for the entities. Because this, is, this was before we had debug draw on other, in other areas. Right, so that's moved. That's gone now. So when we have the... Uh, I don't really debug drawing those regions anymore. I'm not really fussed about it, to be honest. I always do that again. Yeah, that's not in the way now. Um, so the next thing is the camera. So back in the main thread, or main file. Um, so only if we, if the editor should render game, will it do this? So we've got that working already. Now there's like a game camera. Okay, then there's this camera update stuff. So the problem is, I think part of the problem is, is this camera update will take any of these sort of key presses or mouse movement and it will change the values. So what I would probably want to do is break this into two functions. And we'll probably call one, so one just, um, updates input. And this one will update the transforms. So, so I think every frame you want to typically update the transforms, but sometimes you don't want to update the input. Um, and that should be, Better idea.
Right. So. Crap. I have to copy those again. Hopefully the compiler can optimize that out if they use next to each other. Doesn't matter that much to be honest. Um I'm doing good as well, thanks. Yes, I think now working out three, four times a week is a very good schedule. I do that schedule and it feels very good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel like crap if I don't do it. Um, yeah, it's great. I think. Yeah, I got I got a system in now, which is great. So I'm happy about it. I don't do much cardio, so. Um, yeah. Well, I should probably do some cardio. Do you uh, do you just lift weights or do you do cardio as well, or do you just do cardio? Uh, radio. So, right. So this is in the main function, the main game loop. Um. So I guess so. This is only if you you want to render the world. The game camera. Uh, should render game. I think we'll we'll override the game camera anyway, so we can avoid the calculation of it. I guess should render game should. Use game camera, and for now, it'll be the same. If yeah, now, it'll be the same sort, same thing, I think. I need to put delta time somewhere that's more that's quite global. And actually do a proper delta time as well, not just something that's hard coded. Um Right, so we should use the game camera. Right, so when we have an editor that is open, when there's an editor that is open, editor update, so if it's visible, we should always make sure that we show the, ma the mouse. And it won't do it if it's, or if it's already hidden. So always make sure it's shown just in case we've hidden it. Um, Both two days is usually way left in two days cardio. Right. Right, sounds like a nice split. That's cool. Yeah, I've been uh you know, getting good at my gym now, like I can now lift, I think it's I, I just basically lift was it? Probably about 17 and a half, maybe 18 kg 
uh, in each hand, and I'll sort of just do, you know, um, do some d dumbbells and whatever, just do my arms, shoulders, neck, um, and I'll do sit-ups for my back, um, and obviously a whole range of different squats for, for the legs. Um, so it does me pretty well for now. I think I might try and get up the weight though, because I think my aim is probably lift 20 kg. Because I really, you really start to feel it, like you know, all that extra support around your body, and it's pretty nice. Um, so you update the mouse. And you probably always want to update the transforms. To be honest, you probably update the transform when you do a camera set, maybe. Interesting. See, maybe the transforms could have just been updated in here. Sometimes you need updated transforms. Uh, right, I got me an idea. Yes, yeah, so I think the game logic might want to know about the camera sometimes the game camera <sighs> yeah so the editor's probably right there'll probably be some kind of like maybe it needs to start doing like a game structure because it's getting a bit silly otherwise i've already got one right so we've got the camera in here Um, right. So the editor will use the game camera for when it's viewing the game scene, I guess, in the editor. Um, ah, see, this is the thing, what should we do? Because the level editor will probably be a still version of the of the game and then you might switch over to another screen which is literally just running the game and that's not going to be using the editor so right so maybe we don't need this in the end and what we're actually looking for is if the editor is visible or not right then update the game right okay so we we, we should probably move this all into like a game update right so avoid game update and So in game.h, for now, oh, this gets a bit weird, didn't it? Well, let's just be a bit messy. I can clean this up later. This is not the area of code that we're really mainly working in. Uh, 
Um, so in game.c, we'll just chuck this in here like this. Uh, we're going to include like UI and all this now. Engine UI UI, then the entity system. Uh, was it logic entity? Gotcha. Cool. Um, this is like a game in it, I guess. So it's going to create an entity that we can move around, create some players and stuff. So maybe we need that in, in, uh, in its own. It's called a game in it. always rename it and sort it out proper later. Let's just uh, separate it a bit. Right, so I guess we need the graphics in here as well. Uh, graphics, graphics. All right, what the hell's going on here? Right, graphics needs to be included before the entity apparently. There's things to probably sort out, but it's fine for now. Uh, so yeah, we just, when we put up the game, we create four entities and, and a tile map. And we basically just keep around one of these. So this organism ID is gonna go in this game strut basically. Great, I need to... Uh... Anyway, well, this uses a UI rectangle, doesn't it? All right, so we'll put that in there. Uh, the entity system. It includes types, which are, right. Let's just do that for now. Oh, man, I hate these errors. All right, we'll leave it at that. We'll live with the warning. Uh, so, yeah, we've got to set this inside game in it and use it in game update. Um, so where we say ent ID, that'll be G game. Cool, then a game update. Start some UI frame. Uh, 
Right, then some entity sort of disappears and comes back again. Uh, cool. Um, that looks like that'll work. So the camera's got to move into here. So we've got rid of some of the stuff, which is great and can let's sit down a bit. So the model, yeah, this is when it uses the payload and or puts the puts the updates into the payload. So, um, so this camera stuff should probably be done quite early on. So let's take this. Let's take all of this actually. Move it into game. We'll sort it out. So DT is just a big massive to do. Um, the camera should be initialized like this inside game in it. So in game in it would just be like game camera. Like that. Just instantiate that camera. Then we want it to, if you press the escape, you can hide show the mouse. We'll leave that in here. Uh, and then if it's not visible, we we'll, want we'll to update the game camera. Um, then also update the transforms. Cool. Radio. So now the the view from world transform can be used in the game logic and it should be okay. Um, so, right, I'm glad we made that change now. So when we do the update here, we say g game dot dt, and I'll be fine because it's on the same thread. So this takes the game world and turns it into renderable objects, which will get sent to the render thread when we have one. Um, but it fills up the payload basically. So what we should do is say, make another function called update graphics payload. And then this can all just be condensed down into there, which would be pretty cool. So um, it'll be something like void game update graphics payload. So I don't usually like the word update on its own. So why don't we sort of like change this to sort of update world. You could just call it simulate though. Yes, yeah, so updates the world. So update world, then update graphics payload and pass in the payload that will get filled up and then sent to the renderer. Um, like that, yeah. Uh, cool. So game update graphics payload, in comes a graphics payload. It says it's clearing it here, it's kind of a bad idea. Uh, we'll move that back out to the main. Uh, bear these region dims as well. So these probably need to be stored in the um, Right, if should, if editor should render game. Um, kind of asking about the editor here. Should be all right. Let's just roll with it for now. When I add multi-threading support, I'm gonna be sorting out all the 
this thing includes that thing and you know if if there's any problems there because right now it's all just a single compilation unit anyway but there is some like separation or wouldn't necessarily just be um like anything in the engine or the core anything in here doesn't just include stuff in the game right it doesn't make any sense so the engine is all isolated and yeah, the core doesn't reference GPU, for instance, right? It's the other way around. Um, so, yeah, it's just been messy in a few places, which is okay. You know. uh, so this sees region dims and region grid dims. So how big is a region and how big is the grid for the, um, for the game world? Um, Entity region dims and entity grid region dims that gets instantiated right about here in game in it. So Oh, grid regions. Okay, so I didn't mess this up a bit. Oh, regions grid. Damn it. Cool. Right, so that seems like it will compile. Update the game world. We update the camera if the mouse is visible. And then we update the entities. Uh, update the graphics payload. Uh, this so this goes over all the entities and just pushes on a mo the model right to be re rendered. Um, so I guess we say if the game shouldn't render, we'll simply return early like that. Reduce all that lovely indentation. Um, so when it comes to clearing the payload, that is done here. We clear the payload. Then we uh, game update graphics payload something like this yeah oh this should set the cam amazing so update the game the game tries and adds its render data to the graphics payload then the editor right so in here uh, we should definitely be updating the camera with the global game camera. And we should also put some delta time in here. So it's globally accessible. We don't have to pass it around in every function. Um, yeah. So we're right now we've just got it hard coded because I haven't written the, the you know, time, the time encode yet, which is okay. All right. Yeah, I quite like this change. It's much cleaner now. Well, the main function is a lot cleaner now. Things are just separated out into a sensible place so and it should make the logic um right 
Yeah, so now we've got to make sure that when you have the editor open, you can't update the camera transforms. No, you update the camera transforms, but not the input, something, something like this. So editor update. Um, we would like, where's the camera? Yes, yeah, so the mouse is visible. It's always visible because at the top here, here uh, we've got this um, show mouse. So if the editor is visible, we're always going to show the mouse. Um, for now, that could probably change. So then we would like to update the camera transforms. Amazing. So we should probably move that to the start. Reason being is because I think the gizmos, oh yeah, maybe it's the gizmos that just use it. Yeah, they might use the view from world, I don't know, some, something like that. Um, but yeah, right, I think we're in a good place now. So if we run this, run this game and open up the editor, it should not move the mouse. Right, we've buggered something up now. Right. So I think what's happened is we've got this sort of like Now that we shouldn't render the game. I don't know. Let me just run this in the debugger and see what's up. So I think, so yeah, our BVH, is our BVH being made with like no, is it being made with zero instances? Might be it. Seven, seven. Right. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. Instances count zero. Yeah, so it's been made with nothing. But the renderer. Oh, okay. Let me put a not there. It's always have have something rendering apparently. We'll fix that later. Uh, cool. So here's our scene. It's not updating the input for some reason. Oh, because the editor is apparently showing. So it's always setting the showing the cursor. Is that right? Right, is visible. Um, yeah, technically you're not going to have, right, if ed editor is visible, I guess. Might be the same thing. Yeah, I don't think it's going to read that boolean anymore. Okay. Right. Nope, still ain't it. Oh, it is visible. It'll be not equal to not. Finally. Right, so able to move the mouse around. For some reason, the cursor's not disappearing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it never did. So, 
We should probably put the camera by default here. Um, yeah, it's a little weird. So if we move it to the right by two, and then go up by about two, it should be kind of some of that. No. Well, that's the editor one, isn't it? Whoopsies. So the game camera. Let me instantiate that thing. All right, two's not enough. Um, maybe four is enough. Three on the Y, five on the X, I'll do it. All right, so that just put us in a decent, somewhat decent place off the bat, there you go. Um, yeah, so this guy still moves up and down and then a box appears random, you know, it disappears and reappears and it stops the thing from moving. Um, right, so when we open up, I don't see the game, the editor update though, which sucks. Um, yeah, so, okay. So in the editor, when we run an update, we say if it's not visible, don't. Do anything. Um, uh, so it needs to be able to press a button, which will change the visibility. So I guess it will add a tab. Um, So if we press the F1 key, maybe it goes into the editor. Let's just do that. So if we press F1, it will then go, hang on a minute. How do we add a tab? There's like some function, right? Tab in it. Yeah, so I guess we'll say right. You yeah, gotta be careful not to somehow. Well, you should be able to hide and show the editor, isn't it? So we should be able to say right, press F1. There should probably be that is visible flag actually, not gonna lie. Uh, I don't know why I just didn't jump there, editors are H. Um, uh, editor internal. Yes, but that is visible billion back in. Then in the editor, when you instantiate the editor, we'll set it to true. So visible is going to say. Uh, right, so I think we just want to say if the editor return g editor is visible and right, so I think in this when we run the update, we're probably saying. Right, if it's generally like not visible, just return. Uh, yeah.
But you should be able to press the F1 key to basically toggle. Toggle that bit. Um. And then when we get to here, we say if the G editor tabs count equals zero, we'll make a tab with, so we'll just push on a tab. by default and of voila. Right, I think that's good. So that's gonna sort out that, that tab stuff now. So the tabs will, yeah, so by default it opens up the editor like this. Press F1 and it fails. Um, I think these are the same thing, honestly. Oh, they might be inverted. Inverted logic, but click clean up layer. <laughs> Where's the game? The game is gone. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. You guys press F1 and turn on that editor. Um, hmm. It opens up the default tab, which currently is the material editor. Um, So, right, the editor is plainly not visible. Could it be this render scene rectangle? I think that's it. So we've got to make sure that the scene rectangle is Zero. So this is basically saying there's no area on the screen where the scene texture is going to be rendered, so just render it full screen. Um, yeah, so it's not rendered as part of the UI pass. Right, that was the problem. Cool. Great, so we've been, we'll boot into the editor because we want to just primarily work in the editor at the moment, but in the future, you will default go into the game, you press F1, boom opens up the editor. Um, now this should probably like pause the game and all this. Best stuff to sort out later on. Right. So now we made that sort of architectural change. That should be good. So if we we press the escape key and all of this, you'll see that. Oh, wait a minute. All right, still doing that game camera behind the scenes, isn't it? I don't know. Probably not. That's cool. Um, hmm. Right, so now this camera doesn't update when I move the mouse, which is great. So we're going to set a nice default camera for this one, probably looking diagonally down on this thing. Um, so, right, we should probably have some kind of like, so since we've been doing this sort of like clean up, we should probably start by doing, by putting it into the actual files. So the way we've got it structured right now is got this sort of like editor folder. Uh, it has one header file, the public header, 
and a second one for internal header. So then um, basically we have a few different source files, one for the material editor, one for the level, one for the model editor. And this is for the general common stuff that we've been, yeah, and we've been in that one. The rest are probably had to do with like, like a file format basically, material editor file format. Um, so what we need to do is probably move the logic for the material editor exclusively into this file, uh, but we have a single header where it's all forward declared. So I'm going to say editor material update and that is probably going to have its update graphics payload as well because I might want to do some special graphics rendering stuff maybe um, yeah so we do that then it means so we're going to edit some material so let's drop those in here like this um, yeah, there'll probably be a lot of other logic in here, uh, but maybe not. And if there isn't, we might just bung it all into a single file, um, editor file. Um, but yeah, I think for the level editor and the the level editor and the model editor are probably going to get a lot of code, but we'll have to wait and see about that. Maybe I should just bung it all into one, to be honest. I don't know. Um, so we go to editor internal .h, and we'll obviously get the oh, okay, good, good, good. So um, in editor .c, we would like to say if there is a tab open, um, switch on the. Right, this is definitely ta uh material only yeah so this will call this sort of editor material update graphics payload and we'll pass in the graphics payload um, so all of this belongs into that function because I just sort of just stuck it in here um cool now the next uh thing i want to do is this should call editor material update so we'll get these and chuck them in here right and then there'll be a ui one as well so material UI. It's another one I forgot. Okay. And all this is going to do is take that UI code that we made up above. Um, yeah, so we've so we got these tabs. Um, and so if your tab is selected, split area start. Yes, it's all of this. So I think you want the selected tab to be passed in. Yeah, you probably want the selected tab to be passed in on a few of these. So yeah, I think on material update, you want the selected tab. Let's just pass it in any way. Then I think on the material update, you want the selected tab as well. Right, and this is how we can upload the material through here as well. Um, so it's be editor tab. Yeah, I think these will take a tab in. Let's get that music going again. 
Ah, uh, split state, right, so I'd move that in. Right, so we'll switch here on the... Uh, on the kind of tab we have open. Yeah, we haven't done an, a none tab yet. Yes, correct. It'll be update UI. All right. So that's looking much better. Very, uh, I'm going to separate that out now, which is good for the long run. Um, but yeah, it needs to pass in a, in a tab, that is for sure. So edit to tab. Right, we have to forward declare this. All right. So in the editor. And the stuff to do the material, we always pass in the selected tab just in case. Cool. Um, right, so I guess let's clean that up a bit. Um, so now what we'd like to do is make that change where the camera is going to get orientated such that it'll be nicer to view the, um, the material object that you're trying to use right so we should probably point it so I gotta get these right so pi is obviously do so you take a bit of pi well, I think I could just say pi divided by a half is a quarter of the rotation and we probably want Sorry, a quarter of a circle, right? Um, and that splits into eights. So, yeah, we probably want to rotate half a quarter along along the X and half a quarter down, something like this. Um, and hopefully that works. Why does that sp split state? Rectangle. Right, we need the, the rectangle to come in. Uh, address of rectangle, and because of that, I need to remove the all right. So, hopefully, hey, what's going on here? What's it? Right, this editor row with label, right. This row with label hasn't been uh, it's kind of stack. Well, yeah, some of these things, this is the gizmo update. I think. Should we move these all? No, uh, this is all, this is one's internal. I'll make a common area, 
Maybe. I've already got common area in the header file, so let's call it common here. And we'll just uh, drop that in editor dot or internal h. Drop it up here like this. Engine UI UI. Nice. So if we give this a run, we should be seeing ugh, linker errors. Got to build down um, into an editor file. Uh, what's going on? Unused parameter. Hmm. Um, then the renderer we're currently not using it because we would like to, uh, be yeah, would like to definitely send it to the renderer. Cool. So that put it in the wrong place. It should have. Right. Yeah, look to the right. And up, I think. Left and then down. A bit confused on why that's like that though. I think the Y would be flipped so it's inverted Y axis. Is that right? Is that what it is? No. But yeah, so we've got it facing the right angle now. Now it's got to move it such that this thing is in the center of the screen. So we move the camera across by four, up by four. Let's see how that looks. There we go. Our object. Ba -ba -ba -bam. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit. Um, or maybe the Y should rotate a little bit less. No, that one messed up. Wait a minute. Rotate around the Y. Oh shoot, what is... Yeah, so rotating around the x-axis means it'll make it look down. That's what I wanted to change, the y would make it change on the x-axis. All right, the other way around. Need a bit of a smaller number. Right, then maybe we can move it in just a little bit closer. So let's do a three, three.
Right, getting pretty close to what I want. Let's uh, move it up a smidge. Make it look a bit further down. Maybe change the X and the Z, it might. Get a bit closer. Oh, that's what you want. Look at that. So, yeah, I reckon we got what we want now. So, uh, right, so the next thing to do is to be able to change these material properties and actually have it affect the renderer but this is not being this is just using like a gray material um yeah so we would like to have these things affect this um so right now we only have one material in the renderer so that's what we're going to edit i think uh, we don't really have a material system yet uh, in terms of like each model having a material, I uh, could do though. Oh, what could we do? You could do material properties per. Right, why don't we make a material and then a model instance references a material and then. Right, what benefit is there to that? If you reference the same data, then it means... If you reference the same data, then it means you're data sharing. And whenever you access stuff on the GPU, you have less data polluting your cache. But if we, if we don't... If, our if we have a material just per model instance, it means that you will obviously play the cache more, but the benefit would be you can have like a dynamic um, material where parameters can change on the fly. Um, Uh, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, I wonder what we should do about this then. Because Ross Moscow was saying I should try out procedural materials at some point, which means you just pass in a, some parameters and those get used in the shader and you generate a 3D tech. Well, you do 3D texturing basically. But without textures. Um, oh, sorry, you can still use textures, but yeah, you do it all at runtime, typically the, the 3D volume that you're rendering. Um, I don't think my game's going to suffer from having tons of entities on the screen per se but it might do um so when it, and and it gives you the, the ability just in the game code just to be like right i'm going to render this thing and i can sort of animate Well, no. Okay, sorry. You're not. You're not doing one model, or material per model anyway, are you? There will be a few materials. Yeah, 
Yeah, so overall there'll probably be a few materials and Right. Yeah, so I think I think we might do like a hybrid approach. Well we'll have basically all the static data will be all the materials that stay the same will probably be shared. Are the ones you're making the material editor stuff like that. Um Yeah. So if, right for now we'll just drop in like a Okay, so if we're going to that material.enc, this is what the final material is going to look like. It's going to have a name or whatever. This is our custom encoder format. Um, so we're going to have our... We've already got a graphics material. Where's that? Then the shared. Yeah, material packed emissive. Yeah. Um, You could probably pack it down even more to be honest. And I should be using my encoder system for this, but I don't think it's ready for that yet. That'd be pretty cool. You could pack it down super. That would be interesting. I'll be able to pack mountainous roughness down into like a single U32. But anywho. Um And then the material gets gets unpacked. Is that right in the uh yeah, it gets unpacked. So you can actually use it in shaders. Cool. So I think for now So the graphics material packed. Yeah, so let's, re let's rename this to graphics material packed. So you create a, a packed material. Let's just have it be passed in with the the model instance, I guess, yeah. Wait, no, you're probably going to have... Yes, yeah, so the game side is probably going to... Where's the payload? Custom allocator. Yeah, you probably upload all your materials and then each model will get a, a bunch of material indices or something like that. Okay, okay, okay. It's making more sense. So then we'll just put one material in every frame and that will be the editor one that we mess around with basically. Um, yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Okay, okay, okay. So. Um, so the init and clear are going to have to sort of do things with this. So what's the capacity of materials? And yeah, we're probably going to add another function or two. Um, So model instances push. Yeah, so model instances. Right, we'll change what one out for materials, 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 and material push. Um if it's full return null, if not push on a material and return that pointer. Um
Uh, yeah, this needs to return the material packed. Rightio. So this is going to go... So we, we probably also want to be able to get the next. Um, so the thing is about the material is you're going to be referring to stuff via like a material index. Um... Hmm. Um. Or maybe when you push on a model. All right, let's just leave it like this. We can always come back and make it better. Um, but yeah, we want to be able to wait to get the next index, basically. That's the function that we'll need. Let's just get it working. And change the API, if it doesn't make sense. Payload, materials, okay. All right. So in the renderer, sorry, material editor, when we update the graphics payload, we can now just be like, all right, um, take, I need a material index, not really. Uh, graphics material packed, material uh, equals graphics payload material push. Something like this, right? Then um, all these properties are gonna come from that tab. So albedo comes from tab material albedo. Got a missive color. Uh, metalness and roughness. And then in the we currently have one global material. Um, so, right, so that'll get pushed correctly. But I think in the shader code, I want to be careful in um, internal shared material packed. We've got to look at that and say, yeah, so in, in the global structure, we just put in the material. We don't really have an array of materials or anything like this. We'll do this kind of soon, I think, but just not today. Um, so where we we do that, we have this sort of default material, right? And what we would want to say is if graphics payload, let's just call payload, if payload materials if we have any uh we'll take the one from the end of the list so equals core stack get last uh payload materials right make sure we give that a good old dereference and we'll ask so that should be what it takes to get the material properties updating from the editor into the renderer. So let's give that a go. All right, so we've got a bit of a crash. Uh, 78. Um, 
I had a bit of a problem in the editor. Um, or material 78. Oh, tab is unused. Oh, so if tab is equal to null, this shouldn't be called if tab is equal to null. What's going on? Uh, yeah, exactly. So, what the crap? All oh, right, I returned a null. Hang on a minute. Yeah, I returned a um. An old material, but why did it return an old material? I know it's full, right? If it's full, return null. So, ah, uh, right. The payload didn't get initialized with enough. With enough materials. All right, let's roll with that. Sweet. Cool. So we've got this very dark looking object now. Uh, yeah, it's like absolute black. So I'm not really seeing too much off it, but I think if we change the emissive, it, yeah, it just adds the color on. We haven't really got any shine yet. Um, albedo. Yeah, so we haven't got any sort of like bloom at the moment, that's what I meant to say. So it's not going to like glow when it's emissive. It's just an emissive color for now. We change the albedo. Ain't that nice? Uh, then we can change the... The emissive strength doesn't do anything at the moment because we don't have that in the renderer side. Change metalness. Yeah, so basically non-metals, the diffuse color, so albedo. Um, man, I'm forgetting this already. So, yeah, the light will hit the surface, bounce around the surface, and be tinted to the color of the surface. Um... And that ray will come out to the yeah. So the rest, the rest of the color will be absorbed into the surface, and that will bounce out to the camera. And then with metal S one, you're only seeing all diffused light gets absorbed, and you you're only seeing uh, specular. Yeah, specular. So with the Fresnel, the albedo would tint the Fresnel. It's something like that. So it still colors the metal, but it's only the specular component, not the diffuse component. Man, the memory on that. But yeah, some pink metals. Um, then you can make it rough. And roughness just obviously makes it so that the cube map that it's sampling from on the bounce is uh it's more of a, a a wider cone so it makes it blurrier but that's already pre pre-done um you see it uses image-based lighting so we have a an environment map so this is where you reflect to yeah no we use the environment map to pre-build a pre-filter map and a, and a radiance map so the radiance map is just the pixels to get the diffuse color. Oh, this ain't gonna work well, is it? It's gonna be very dark. Yeah, okay. There's just a very sort of muddy color. There's it's a cube map. So they're all kind of the same sorts of colors. So that gets you the diffuse and the specular comes from the pre-fill map. It's gonna be very dark because I've messed up my texture viewer just a just a bit, not gonna lie. Oh okay, I fixed it. Um, so this is when it gets that sort of specular reflection. It renders that pixel, 
gets the normal, then traces the cube, well, looks at this texture. And based on the roughness, it will choose a different MIP. So this one chooses this MIP. You know, it's a cube map, so you got all these different sites. Why isn't that changing? Did I break my... Right, I think I broke my uh, text input stuff, which is a shame. We need to fix that. But yeah, depending on how rough it is, the higher MIP it's going to choose. And this is pre-calculated. So it gets blurrier and blurrier. This does like a per pixel, it's done a cone, uh, a cone trace of the environment map. So the unblurred version samples against that. Um, and gives you this sort of image. So it makes it such that it's cheaper just to sample a, a, one texture versus the same texture 20 odd times or more. Well, it'd be hundreds of times per pixel if you didn't do it this way. Cool. So yeah, I guess I can link to this stuff. I, I used OpenGL, then OpenGL. There's a material section. I basically followed that and some other resources too. PBR, so IBL is the diffuser radiance and the specular one. Yeah, this is sweet. Happy about this. Um, so what's next? We might want to change, like the lighting is got these two lights which sort of move around. I think it's okay for now. In the future, we probably want to change that, uh, but not too fast yet. Um, So, yeah, should we quickly fix that glitch with the text or the input box? I don't know what's going on. It's very bizarre. Yeah, we'll fix that and then we'll move on to something else. Um, we could do viewing options, right? Where you can spin the object around. That might be a bit of fun. Do a viewing options and you can change the cube map to light and day and just see it in different environments. Um, we will probably have more view, uh, viewing options because you're gonna to wanna to see material in all different times of day, right? Um, so yeah. But we, yeah, we'll do these viewing options next. All right, just gonna take a quick break and get another drink and then we'll uh, sort out those things. All right, BRB.
Right, welcome back, everybody. Um, so yeah, the next thing is we want to sort out that. For some reason, the input box is uh, it's not changing. When you type something in, it's not accepting the change. So if we start on the outside and work our way in, so there's a MIP text box. Input box, input UI input U32. Oh, it's a layer. Right. So. Right, it turns a Boolean if it's changed. And it gets clamped, that's fine. So let me print out the the array layer and just see what's going on. So I press F9, bring up the text viewer. Where it's that uh, pre-fill map. And um, we'll view. Right, so change that to one, it's not changing. Right, so we're seeing that. So that's interesting. We'll keep it there for now. Let's dive in and see what's going on. So as you, did we change this type of stuff? Ooh. I don't think so. Right, so you, Right. Mm. Right, does any write back the value when you when does it say it's changed? Um, drive is visible, we've pressed. Right, it has changed false. Um, right, the current w widget's ID hash. When does this get set? Ooh. Text input. All right. I changed how that text input stuff happened. Or when it happened. I think. Right, where did it used to be? Let's just go to main. So there's some text input stuff here. Right, I used to have that UI frame start ages ago. Right, why, I used to have it before the events. I forgot why I changed it. So then I can write BRB. True. It's B R B. Right. 
Eh, wrong one. Pre-fill map. That's the one I wanted. Right, so I put a one in there now. Right, that updated. Yours. It's not allowing me to backspace anymore. So that's probably because the text update needs to come after this. I've got to double check the um, color picker though. Because I think the color picker... There was something to do with... What am I doing? Pre-fill map. Right, there you go, that's updating the text box properly now. Cool. Right, great, so the array layer now works fine. Yeah, catch you later, Joe, say good to see you. Hope you have a good, uh, a good start to your weekend. I'll see you hopefully on Sunday. Um, but yeah, good to see you. Have a good night. All right, so. Right. So now we fix that bug, let's just double check we didn't break anything else. So if I bring up, press H. We've got the gizmos. Right, that doesn't, only will update when the editor is open. I think. <laughs> I'm just confused what's going on there. Are they off the screen? I don't know. And all that. We don't want to be doing anything with the gizmos. We want to try the... Is it the Y key? There was a key. Oh, it was when the editor's open. Ah, gotcha. Um, color picker. I also have a color picker up here, don't I? But yeah, okay. Right, this seemed to work fine. So that's good. Nice. Uh, so the next thing we'll like to change is to add some viewing options. Uh, we want to be able to change these environment map and we want to be able to change probably the rotation. So let's start with the rotation because it'll be the easiest. Um, so we're going to the material editor. Um, we've got this update UI. And we just split area on the left hand side, we display some things. So uh, we display all these properties. So what I would like to do is put a label down, put a title down, we call it header, figure out how we want to do it. Um, call it like section header maybe. Um, and we'll just give it a label. And I think we can just say, we need to give an area. Cut base with some line height and put a bit of, make it a text widget. Um, so we have something like this. That'd be quite ideal. Then we should just be able to call UI section header and we'll call it uh, properties. Then we want another section header where we would like to have some viewing options or viewer options. Finding editor better than nano. 
I'll follow you here and then uh, I'll follow you home. Thank you. Appreciate it. How you doing? Go to Cami. Um, so let's just put rotation. So we say rotation. Uh, then we'll render probably a zero to one, maybe zero to zero to pi, maybe. Or pi times two, and we'll get that rotation y. So that's just in the viewer, basically. Um, then in the render, yeah, then when we do the render, uh, when we render our, that sort of, it'll be a rotation around the y-axis with tab material rotation y. Nice. Oh, fair play. What's uh, what's making you very stressed? Right, so what's some properties now? You know, maybe you can. Hmm. We should center the um the text field. Align to boundary one of these boys. Uh, align to middle or left middle. Mostly grad school, fair play. <laughs> right, so now that's a bit better. Um, maybe we have a separator, that's cool. Right, so that does rotate it, it's great. But yeah, my, my day's been alright, I've just been working. It's been pretty chill to be honest. Um, yeah, it's been good. Cool. Yeah, so we have that rotation in the viewer. And then we can change the sky map. I've not got a thing in for this yet though. Um so should we talk about sky map or cube map, environment map, whatever you're gonna call it. I've only got two. I got them from this website. There was a, a guy who does some blog posts and stuff. Um and I just downloaded these, he's got a whole bunch of cube maps as well. Then they're not HDR, they're just SDR, so you're not really going to get that. Um, you know, you're not going to be able to get sort of much, um, you know, like a bright light from the environment too much. It does show up in the reflections, but it's not necessarily a bright um, reflection. Um, even though you got these sort of bright lights here, you don't really see them. Oh, well, they kind of show up. Could be brighter. Um, so yeah, we want to be able to switch to a different environment map. Now we don't really have a, they're just JPEGs. Typically, yes, yeah, so I think we'll just pass to the renderer. What is the cube map environment path, right? And then we'll probably just load it in. Um, so we might need to you know, load it in if it's changed and then update some of the textures. So we go to sort of the graphics. 
.c file. When you instantiate the graphics system, we initialize all the all the texture handles, um, and sometimes actually initialize the stack textures. Then here we just go over all of the slices and upload them to the GPU. Then we should be dispatching. So that's the environment map texture, yeah? Right, if not initialized, then down sample the cube map, render the irradiance map, and render the pre filter map. And that's what's, these are the things that are sampled when doing PBR. So, what we would like to do is move this to a separate function, maybe, and call it update cube map or environment map. Um, and now we'll sort out all this image based lighting stuff. I no idea 3D GPU running can be done with C. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can write a renderer with C. Um, you can write anything in C, really. Uh, but I also made my own sort of um, C to Spear V shader compiler. Have I got a link for it? Guess not. Um, but yeah, I made my own shader compiler for C, so I can use it for shader programming as well. So it's pretty powerful. Um, it's got it's got pl plenty of restrictions, but you know it, the result means that you can write vertex shaders and pixel shaders in C, and and compute shaders, and uh, share function structures and enums between CPU and GPU. It's pretty nice. So I don't really need to move this to, to uh, a function. What I can actually do is just move the image loading code to here. This makes it a bit bigger though, but oh well, mm, yeah. Right, here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I want it to work too. I need to set that up. Could do it. We could do it. They already all get hard, but github.com slash I think that'll do it. Let's give that a go. Take it for a while. Bam. That's what we want. Right, so with the cube map, this will upload the cube map. So we take this from the initialization and we'll instead take it to the uh, yeah. So now what we want to do is this be upload upload to GPE. Um, so we wanted to say right has this thing changed? So how does one know if it's changed? So I think we'll have this environment map. I don't know. In the future, an environment map will just be a single file. So it'll probably be an asset. Uh, yeah, so 
All right, here's what we'll do. So in the graphics system, we'll be like, what is the path? Right, environment map path. And we say, if G, so I think we don't have to check for equality. Just, just points for equality should probably be enough. I think, maybe. If G, oh, I need to put in the payload as well. Excuse me, payload. Environment map path. All right, so if G graphic or if payload environment map path and payload. So if you have requested a change and it is different from the existing environment map path, right? then we should accept such change if we loaded it. Well, we'll just accept the change. It, it should load, right? If it doesn't, it will assert. Payload, environment path. So, Right, this means then we should have two selections um, that we can just pick from. Uh, we'll start off with the night, but we can always go to the day. So in the material editor, um, I don't know what I want to do. We could probably, oh no, we, we, we have a combo box now. Yeah. So UI combo box, right, so values, so I can put some values out, um, oh, these are interesting, let's take a look. Right. So effectively, we should be able to have a static selected index. Or we say environment map index. Then another one is a static list of strings, map paths. And so the paths are these two here. You know, again, in the future, when we make these assets, we'll change how this thing works. But for now, this will just be good enough. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll be like asset. Right. We should default initialize it to this one though, um, in the renderer. So in yes, yeah, so G graphics should be defaulted to that in the initialize function, and this will. Put that string on, and then this eat, read, read each slice. Cool. Nice. 
Right, so inside graphics in it. Somewhere here, we're just going to plop this down and say, hey, the default environment map is this night one. So at least the game won't crash. Um, wait a minute. No, 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 no. It will crash because it wouldn't. You forgot to put it as. Uh, yeah, you got to put it at the payload side. Uh, but if there isn't one, you should really clear the textures. So maybe the idea is. Yeah, let's just put it in the in the payload by default. So in main, uh, in that sort of game update payload thing, we'll just chuck it in here. So the game will say, oh, "I want this night environment map," something like that. Right. So I think that's the change we just need to make there. That should update invite update the environment. Oh wait, material editor or editor material. Um, we want to do a quick combo box. Um, so you need the rectangle. So in this case, we want to say environment map. Um, address of oh, that's the rectangle where it's we put in. Um, the value that we're changing, so that'd be environment map index, then the values, so core array count of this environment maps, map paths, and then the environment map paths go in here. Then what's next? The style. So the style is going to be, um, probably the box style. Um, okay. So this will then give us. Tell, tell us if it's changed. Yeah. So we say if the value is changed, then we go, all right, um, um, G editor environment map path, which I still got to make, is equal to um, environment map paths environment map index. So when you instantiate, So const char star environment map path. Yep. So when you instantiate the editor, you're going to want to set the environment map path to this night one for now. Uh, and then in the update payload, We'll set it to whatever the editor. Crap. This is in the update function. Whoops. We didn't have an initialize. Right, I found my first field for this material editor. Finally. The environment map. Um, or should that belong to the tab? These road viewing options should be irrespective of. Ah, uh, for crying out loud. You probably want the option for both. You probably want to have a one which is synced between all the open materials and yeah let's just make it shared see so if you change between different materials at all yeah so this material editor song name please yeah Zandris. this is um nick johnson um 
we're about six minutes in maybe a bit earlier but welcome back Zardas. how you doing it's been a while Okay, so I reckon you can drop the material editor in here. Editor material. Um. Yes, yeah, so you might want to be able to load a new tab. I... Maybe these functions should be called editor tab material update because that's what they are. Uh, so G editor material environment map path is equal to that line there, noise. Um, so in the editor, we've got to make sure that editor material gets replaced with editor tab material. And then when you instantiate the editor, we also call editor material in it. Nice. That was at the environment map. And then do we put it in the payload? Uh, we didn't. So when you have the material tab open and you send render data to the renderer, um, in the payload, we need to put in the environment map path, and that'll be equal to um, material environment map path. Nice. So rather than belonging to the tab here, this one is G editor. All right. Cool. So if we give this a run. That should be a a combo, we should have a combo box now with a combo box to select the environment map. Should be quite nice. Maybe, just maybe, the environment map comes first, then the rotation of the, of the cube thing. All right, let's give that a go. Hopefully it works. It doesn't crash. All right, so we've got environment maps here now, and it's loaded the one at night, which is great. Let's um, actually make something, just make it a little, make it metal, bit of roughness, put a albedo color on it. Have I ever used DirectX? No, but I've read a lot of the documentation and seen code, um, and and no kind of. I've researched into it and the comparison, the differences between Vulkan and DirectX. That's about as far as I go. I don't really plan on supporting it though. Oh, it just works. Look at that. So it, do, it does take time to load though, because it, it's got to calculate the um, pre-filter maps and the 
they seem to be quite um, unoptimized. Maybe they're quite, I've got quite a range, uh, good number of samples per pixel to calculate these um, pre filter maps. These things. So we get the reflection information, and as you increase the roughness, it gets rougher. Oh, wait, it's the wrong one. Yeah, it gets rougher. So the, cal calculating these pre filter maps just takes a bit of time. So yeah, we changed the the night one. Yeah, so the material looks not different. Ah, oh, materials and colors are complicated, man. <laughs> oh, my days. Anywho, it's a weird little object, I know. We could probably, should we um monkey around and do a better object? So I think we've got the material editor in quite a good place. Uh, we still want to do the undo system. That's something I want to do next stream. Um, every edit, is going to be recorded and stored into a file. We've already got the file format sorted out. The code is already generated to save in as text. Um, so yeah, we just got to actually, when we make a change to these guys, note it down and serialize it out. But I want to be able to show the history down in here, right? And be able to scroll back and select past bits of history and also see who did it at what time. Uh, so that'd be quite powerful. But then we have a massive just history of all the changes and what it took to build this thing. Um, might be useful. And maybe, maybe you can, uh, yeah, no, that'd be right with like a scroll view. That'd be good. Put it all there. Um, yeah, it'd be pretty powerful. But f for today at least, I wanna what do I wanna do? Yeah. First of all, this is printing like crazy. This should not be printing. So we'll delete that, then we'll put a new render object down and call it material. And it'll just be our material example object. I think I'm doing a sphere with a another sphere at the, as a at the base. So it should be be nicer to work with. Um, and then finally, you can you can have physical specs. I mean, mechanical. What do you mean by that? Have you got any examples? Um, I was thinking of doing some OpenGL to DirectX. Oh, going from OpenGL to DirectX, but I might do Vulkan just because I've in the DirectX is easier to write. C++ and I've been using C and I'm more comfortable in C. Yeah, I know the feeling. So, how, what is your level of experience with graphics APIs? Have you written a renderer in OpenGL? Like, how, how, far have you got with your render in OpenGL? I guess is my question. Um, and I guess, I'm guessing you wanted to switch to DirectX 11. Um, so there's that print that's going on in GPU land for some reason. Oh yeah, because it was yeah, checking for a bug. So in the graphic system, uh, we'll add a new model, we'll call it material. Now we'll search for all uses of this and see what the... Right. Cool. So this, when we instantiate the game, let's just make a new BVH of ellipsoids. 
with uh, this new material object thing. Um, so I want to have one which is just a sphere. So zero, zero, zero. 0.5 it's minus 1 to 1 so I can do 1 because it's got a length of 2 uh, then we want to have something that's kind of near the bottom and a bit at um, minus Six with a half dims of two. That should do it. Right, so then in our material editor or editor material, uh, rather than using the box, we use the material model. That should be it. Right, let's give that a go. Hopefully it doesn't blow up the computer. Fingers crossed. Right, there's our sphere, but where's the other sphere? It's obviously to uh, where... Yeah, you're not going to see any rotation. Yeah, it's the problem with this new one is that you're not going to see any rotation. Uh... Oh, it's even. Strength, elasticity, density. Yeah, well, those are not really uh, properties of a of a rendering material, and this is what it is. Um, I don't really know if I'm getting any physical um, properties. Like, you know, I was thinking of not really doing any physics for this game, but you know, when I played. Astro's or well, Astro Astrobot. I've been playing that and sit my son son on my lap and he's been watching me play it. He's been quite enjoying it. There's only one in a bit. Um and that game is just so interactive. Like you walk around the map and there's all these things that just move around. And I think it might be cool to have some kind of physics now. Not going to be the best physics, but I think we can do some simple physics. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're going to need to do like, yeah, where each material has these physical properties. They could have like, mm. or, um, yeah, I don't know. They could have the, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the game needs. Right, if we make that sphere just a little bit smaller, and we could probably add like another ball. We could probably add some balls on the. I don't know. The rotation is kind of pointless now, but it was fine because it only took two seconds to throw in anyway. I'm currently right now, I'm writing my own OBJ Empire model rendering right now, practice course, but then I plan to add light in, in GUI. Keep playing around with it. Cool. Well, I don't think it's a wise idea to get started with Vulcan, basically. Um, so I guess my second question is what do you want to achieve? Do you want to write a game? Do you want to write Learn, learn about writing engines is your goal in future to become a, a graphics programmer um, what's your end goal so where where, uh, where I recommend you get started it, if you're already using SDL get SDL 3 and use their 
used their SDL GPU. It got released about two months ago and it's probably the best abstraction over Vulkan Metal and DirectX 12 for indie game developers. Um, you'll look at the header file so it's it include you know standard C project. Um, you know you could probably try and rip well, I know you probably can. Yeah, you could. Yeah, if you don't use SDL, it's a bit annoying. You have to, you know, include it. But yeah, it it's a nice simple abstraction on top of Vulcan Metal and whatever, um, and it allows you to just sort of like you know create buffers, create command buffers, fill the command buffers with dispatches and draw commands. And send it to the GPU without having to worry about synchronization code and maintaining lifetimes of objects and um, being, and it deals with probably quite a lot of the error prone uh, bits of all the complicated bits of Vulkan because like allocating memory and and all sorts. So you. Um, yeah, I highly recommend this. But if you don't already use SDL, um, there's other libraries that so so cool. Um, there's a graphics part which I think you can use independently. I'm not sure. I've never used it. But I've heard good things about this. Although this one is doesn't support Vulkan, it will render out to OpenGL. Um, or Metal, or Web GPU, or DirectX 11. Um, but yeah, it's just a high level abstraction on top of those APIs. Now, the reason why I suggest you do this first is because what you need to understand and learn is how do you structure a renderer? Like, I guess you're, you build in a 2D game or a 3D game. So effectively, your frame is going to look like creating textures that then get read in as input and output to another texture. And then like this texture gets created by a bit of that texture and that texture. And this basically just goes on a bunch of times. Um, you know, if, if it's a 2D game, this it might be quite simple like this. But for 3D games, you're going to need like tons of textures and render passes and all this thing and you got to understand like and learn this stuff and it's much easier to learn that stuff when you're not messing around with the low level or well, low level APIs such as Vulkan and um, uh, DirectX 12 it's much easier to use the more higher level APIs to really understand what they're used for and then once you understand that when you step back a layer, you have much more of an understanding on how you would want to abstract your renderer. Um, it's quite a big undertaking to learn the DirectX and, oh, sorry, the DirectX 12 and the Vulkan APIs, but it's possible. Um, and once you understand it, you don't want to switch back because you understand the power that you get over using someone else's hand rolled. API. You get to roll, roll your own and make those different decisions. Uh, so that's why I would suggest. Um, yeah, I think I when I was learning Vulkan, I wrote eight renderers in three months and I threw them. You know, I kept throwing one away because I wanted, I would build a renderer to test out something and I'd be like, no, it doesn't work. Like, I want to learn and to test out some other way of doing it and just going through different iterations and just trying things out and it's very it's a very complex process to really learn the api but um there are a lot easier methods these days like they've made some extensions which became core which simplified the api by making the api more complicated and confusing new users at the same time so yeah it's just the way it is i thought i wanted to create 
a game, but I really enjoy graphics. I want to become a graphics programmer. I don't know, like rent tools, etc. Cool. Cool. Well, yeah, I recommend get start, started there because um, you'll actually make progress with the way I suggested. Um, but if you really want to learn about the other stuff, um, perhaps on the side, have another little project where you're just learning how to draw a triangle in Vulcan and just start to understand what it, the API is, if you know what I mean. So you can always do both at the same time if you have that sort of time available. Uh, that's a different approach. But yeah, definitely keep uh, leverage someone else's API if you want to make progress on that, on that, on understanding the high level concepts first. Um, by the way, does your game want to be 2D or 3D? Right, okay, for some reason when I made this material object... Six, that's good. Yeah, I need to make that this one a bit smaller. Yeah, it could be an ellipsoid where maybe on the Y dimension it's just made a bit smaller. Maybe a 0 0.6, 0 0.8. Just squish down a bit and then on the Z maybe 0 0.6 or 4, something like that. That'd be quite thin though. Ugh, bad idea. Maybe not though. <laughs> okay. Um. just two ellipsoids that you see one is vertical ones but maybe that'll do let's live with that cool nice all right so Yeah, so we can open up a new tab and we've got a completely different set of properties here. Change the hue, pick a nice blue or purple, like a lilac. Oh yeah, you can change between the two materials and these viewing options are all the same. Pretty nice. So we're getting pretty close to finishing this thing. I do want to make it um um Let's make a to-do list. What is left to finish this thing? So we want to be able to obviously have undo and redo. Support. That's okay because we've made a material, an editor material file. So we have one file per material that will be saved into the assets 
um, materials folder, right? With a it's a text file and it stores all of the edit operations, like the whole history since the beginning of the of the creation. And every edit has like the time since 1970 and the person who did it. So you can blame them or whatever. And then you obviously have a property and type. So you either change the name, albedo, emissive strength, or metalness or roughness. And then the union will be set to one of those fields based on the tag. Um, and then we have the material is just an array of actions, right? So the undo and redo system will just, yeah work with this and you can save it out and when you load it back in you can undo go back into the past so we want to be able to also view the history view the sort of history or the action history in the ui right that's a big feature so down here we have to see all the edits who did it what time what it is, right? We also want to have icons, where it's a bit boring looking at text all the time. It would be nice if this it says a material here. It had the word or had a little icon for a material, um, and yeah, a little, little icon for for material. Um, we, should, we haven't got any icons yet, so this would be the beginning of making an icon asset and just, you know, adding uh, some pixel art or something and just get something basic in. And it could be touched up later. Um, do, 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 do. Um, we obviously need to be able to save and load. Right, save and load. The material um, we don't have the ability we don't have a screen where we don't have the editor tab type none Okay, new tab. So a new tab screen should, what should it do? It should display. So when you press this new, it shouldn't open up a new material. It should instead open up. Now, what would you like to do? So you would have a new level, new, See, when you click here, it could do a popover and then you select what you want. But then, right, so you click here, it will show new material, new level, new model. And then, you could, and then you'll probably have all the assets in some little browser, I guess. And you just be able to search for it. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I want to do that yet. Yeah, maybe I think we'll skip on that because yeah, it's more important if we focus on the editors themselves, we can get Yeah. Um mm, Yeah, cuz I need I need I need a build command or a build script. It's going to take all the materials in this folder and compile them down into a single material file which gets loaded by the game. And then that needs to be put into the renderer 
and the renderer needs to support multiple materials. It doesn't support multiple materials yet. So I think what we might do is spend one more stream and we'll do these things. Crap. <laughs> Undo reader support view action history history in the UI. Just some icons make it look nice and save and load. That should be enough. And then so that'll be Thursday stream. And then on Sunday, we might be able to start something new. Um, should be pretty cool. So yeah, I think on, on Sunday stream, I want to rework the renderer a bit. I want to make it so that we don't have any glitches anymore and it supports multiple materials. Um, yeah, this glitch is like crap. And I think the performance is quite bad as well. So we'll sort out the performance. We'll sort out multiple materials. We'll sort out uh, the glitches as well. Because yeah, I think when you zoom in, it gets like real bad performance. Can hear my machine going like crazy. So we'll improve that on from Sunday, I think. So we'll spend like a week on that, or three streams. Should be pretty nice. Um, right, so it's good progress today. Um, so for those of you you are supporting the channel, thank you so much, guys. I'll put the code up tonight that we've changes we've made. Um, yeah, if you'd like to get access to the code, um, if you support via Kofi or Twitch, you get access to the code on your machine. Um, but yeah, so the next stream is Thursday, about two and a half hours ago on Thursday, and four hours ago on Sunday. Okay, so let's find someone to raid. Hmm. Oh, TCAP's streaming. Why, why ain't I following TCAP? All right. Let's read TCAP before he, um... Yeah, why not following TCAP? Yeah. Right. Have a good uh, evening, guys. I'll see you all in a future one. See you all Thursday, hopefully, if not Sunday. Right. Bye bye. Wait, what am I doing? The raid button.